In the pagan world, there are certain principles that we hold dear with regard to our love of God, however we call Him, and in my case it's Odin, or our love of the environment, how we care for the birds and the bees and the trees and the apple seeds that provide for us food and our living, as well as the concept of diversity where we accept that Lord, Mother, and Father God has made all people and all things, and frankly has the omnipotent, omniscience, and omnipresence to do that. There are other principles that are available for you on the Pagan Federation website, which is out of London or England or something like that. But the truth is, in America, we have become a, a nation of liars. We've become a nation of liars because there's a whole bunch of dreamers that have come here based on the lies that their parents told them, or possibly the lies they told themselves, where they came over on a tourist visa and they just decided to stay. Or they came over as a student and they just decided to play. And they came over here and they decided to lay with our people. And as a result, they produced American citizens on which that they can, well, get on their coattails. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth about America. And there are some very important hot topics that are happening right now. But in essence, it's almost a throwback to the 70s in terms of politics where people's rights, individual rights, community rights, not at all, but people's rights have to matter. You see, your individual rights to privacy are being abused every day by social media and other companies. Your personal rights are being abused every day by immoral children working in our local stores. <clears throat> our vehicle to the future is on whether or not we have the privacy rights, the community rights, and the social security rights to be here. You see, social security numbers were never supposed to be meant to be utilized for our business and professions, but they seem to be that already. It's a well-known fact, and it's been documented in many news stories across America over time, that that was never supposed to be what that was for. And yet now we use it all the time and more, and I can remember having to give my social security number allegedly to a company that was just about ready to hire me and I hadn't really had a chance to speak to any hiring manager but the recruiter in an ancillary company insisted that I provide it. So at that point my privacy to my number, the privacy to my life became someone else's fodder and as long as I needed a job then people feel they have the right to ask for anything and that is odd. In America, we have human rights, and human rights are part of that United Nations Treaty that 400 countries or more signed into, and has been revised a few times, but the general principle is, you don't own me, and I don't own you, and I don't have the right to abuse you like they did during the times of the Nazis. And yet we still have people in America, Christians in America, Wiccans in America, people who are really bipolar, if you will, in America, who are simply saying, this is what I think America is. It's this simple. It's black and white issue. It's a gender by gender issue. And what I mean by that is there's a woman and there's a man. And that's it. But what we've seen across the history of America, what we've learned from the Kinsey Institute at Indy University, is that is not exactly true on the spectrum of men or the spectrum of women. But we do allow for all kinds of birth defects. We just don't allow for a sex birth defect. And I just look at people and go, what the fuck is wrong with you? Because people have rights, and I'm not outing myself to anything. What I'm talking about is human rights almost every day. Because my human rights are being constantly abused, constantly impeded, and constantly cheated every day. Sometimes people do this when their parents are about to die. They make it impossible for the most honest person in their family to not be able to participate in the end-of-life ceremonies, which means that you're there towards the end and you get a chance to be there when it's the end and you get the chance to participate in the burial and all that. But the real reason behind all that hubaloo and all that drama and all the secrecy of them is because they're interested in more inheritance. And my attitude is you have devalued the human life before you. And you've devalued my human life and bastardized my rights. 
You see, my rights to achieve a job are my, my rights to achieve a job, but if your students and if your employees are getting in my way, stealing my property, stealing my authorship, stealing my intellectual work, stealing my copywritten work, stealing my creative work, stealing my videos, editing my videos, just clipping my videos without even listening to them, you're harming my right to work. And openly, people who want to employ me keep saying, can you talk about this topic, please? Would you talk about that topic, please? And I go to do it, and then somebody clips my work, and then I don't get the job, or I don't get paid as much. So I've just found, provided them a foundation of what they can talk about in politics, and they might do something, and the nation sort of proved that I'm actually guiding them in some way, but the truth is people in my family won't even believe this. Because their attitude is that I'm a low-level, subservient type of person that only deserves $10 an hour, and yet other people who I know, like, and trust think I'm worth $350 an hour. But here's the deal. Some person in impoverishment will say, that's a great salary. I'm going to come and be him. And the truth is they cannot talk like me. They might be able to study me. They might be able to listen to me in video. They might be able to try to do a presentation I did and pull it off well with their cheating of God's rights to them. But at no time did they have the right to participate in my life in a way that's not right for me.